So, if you don't mind, so can you please come with me to Gospel according to John, chapter 1. Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 4, verses 4 to 11. I have, okay, King James Bible with me. Usually I, you know, read, okay, ESV whenever I read English Bible, but the Bible was so big in size, so I happened to grab this King James Bible so it will fit in my okay, luggage. So let me just go through the King James. Well, it's difficult to pronounce some of the things there, but I will try my best. So here is the God's word. Verse 4, Gospel according to John chapter 1, verse 4 onwards. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might, might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. Verse 9. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh unto the world, into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. May the Lord bless the scripture portion in all our hearing. Amen. <clears throat> so, I am so privileged to uh, stand with God's word. You know, this is the light, the word of God. God is light and God's word is light. The gospel is light. So, I am so privileged and honored to stand with the light and in the presence of light. God is here. So, you know, sometimes in our church, during lockdown and during some Hindu festivals, just only a few people gather. Sometimes my wife, my mom, and my mom's wife, that's it. Then the scripture that really encourages me is, you know, what Christ said in Matthew chapter 18, I believe, where two or three gather in my name with one accord, I am among them. So the Lord is here among us with all his presence. Therefore, I'm so happy to be in the presence of the light. Well, John's Gospel, as we know that, John was writing, therefore, we may believe in God so that we may be saved. That's what he said when it comes to chapter 21, that we, so he has taken the time and all the efforts that he did to write this gospel. I believe he wrote it by the help of the Holy Spirit because that's what we believe in the inspiration of the scripture. So he wrote it so that today we may believe in Jesus Christ and have eternal life. That's the purpose. So, he says in verse 4 and 9 that he is the light. Verse 4 reads, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 9 says, That was the true light, referring to Christ. How do we know if John is referring to Christ? Because in verse 1 he says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. How do you know? Who is that word? In verse 14 said that word came in flesh. So verse 14 is the proof that John is exclusively talking about the second person of the Trinity, which is Jesus Christ, the Son, Son of God. So he said this Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the light. He is the light. Christ said in John's Gospel, uh, in the same gospel, chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. What a bold saying is that. He said, I am the light of the world. So to understand light better, I just flip it around to understand to, you know, darkness. 
What is darkness? Darkness is simply the absence of light. Where there is no light, absolutely there is darkness. So darkness is the absence of light. Therefore, Christ is the light, which means where Christ is, there is no darkness. Where Christ is, there is no darkness. He is the light to this world. Now, what do we need this light? Why we need this light? Yes, we need this light because we are in the darkness. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 16, you know, when Jesus went to certain places, it is said, they sat in darkness and death. Jebulin, Naphtalium, Naphtalium, I think, those, those two places. So when Jesus went to those two places, it is written, they were sitting in great darkness and death. The darkness is symbol of sin. And the death is symbol of hell. People are living in sin and they are heading to hell. Yes, the whole world sin. That's what Paul said in Romans chapter 1. He said, Jewish people sin, Israelites sin. And in verse, uh, uh, you know, chapter 2 he said, I'm, I'm sorry, in Romans chapter 1 he said, Gentiles sin. And in chapter 2 he said, Jewish people sin, Israelites sin. And in chapter 3 he said, the whole world sin against God. Therefore, the whole world is in the darkness. People are in darkness. So they need light. People need light. Therefore, the purpose of light is to, verse 5, in verse 5, he said, and the light shineth. When light shineth, the darkness goes. The power of the light is this. Darkness cannot take over light, but light can take over the darkness. What I mean is, if there is darkness, if you bring a light in it, the darkness will go. But when there is light, darkness cannot come in. There is darkness, but when the light comes, the darkness goes. Because in India, we, we have something called okay, power cut. Power cut is no electricity. You can't expect when electricity will come and when it will go, you can't expect in India. Therefore, we are always ready with uh, okay, candles and we have some other equipment, at least when there is no electricity, therefore, you know, lights and fans will work. We make those adjustments. And sometimes in the okay, midnight, electricity, you know, power is off. Electricity is off. And my babies wake up and they start crying. So we know that there's no electricity, there's darkness. Then we switch on the light, the darkness goes. Light can overtake darkness, beat darkness, take away darkness, but darkness, when there is light, darkness cannot come in. Darkness cannot overtake the light. That's the power of the light. So Jesus is the light to the world. Billy Graham, one of the celebrated evangelists, has said to his, okay, one of his okay, daughters, please go and serve Indians. Please go and serve Indians because India is in great darkness. Of course, every country is in darkness, but there is some difference. For example, evening 6 o'clock, there is darkness. But it's so little. But as it goes up, up, up and up, night at 12 o'clock, there is a very thick darkness. A very thick darkness. India is like night at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, where there is so much of thick darkness. India is still in darkness. Great darkness. Great darkness. I can just tell you some of the things or some of the stories to, you know, establish my point, establish my point. 
that India is in darkness. We have something called caste system, caste system in India, upper class, middle class, low caste. That's a sign of darkness. These high caste people look down the low caste people. These high caste people mistreat the low caste people. These high caste people don't allow the low caste people to marry the children or to make friendship with them. They're so isolated. They say that we have come from the head of Brahma, he is the God, they say, who has created the universe. Brahma is the one that has created the universe. Therefore, we have come from his head, whereas the locust people have come from his feet. There is darkness. There was something called Sati Sahagamana. Sati means wife, Sahagamana means burnt alive. So way back, I think 100 years back, India, all the women had terrible times, terrible, hazardous times. They were so scared because if husband is dead when wife is alive, husband is dead, wife is alive, when they burn the dead body of the husband, we call incremation. That means we put some wood and then, you know, put the dead body, burn the body, incremation. Of course, we the Christians in India, we bury the dead bodies, but Hindus go for incremation. So they bring wife forcefully, tie her to the dead body of the husband and burn her alive. Wasn't the darkness? Great darkness it was. And that woman on fire, she screams and shouts and cries. Then they play the drums. They play drums, so therefore people back in the village, they don't hear her crying, shouting, screaming, with all her pain in the fire. Darkness. Till today people are in darkness. I just call my wife and, you know, to just okay, check how she's okay, doing. You know, she told me that today something is going on in our village. What is that? I said, festival. What is that festival? Ganga Sambaram. Ganga is the name of, you know, like one of the rivers in India. And Sambaram is the festival. Ganga Sambaram means river Ganga festival. So they worship water. They worship rivers. What do they do on the festival? They bring an idol, say Ganga, and then they take the idol throughout the streets and they whip themselves, their bodies, and they walk in fire. They just set fire, some fire, and they run from this end to the other end, you know, without shoes. And their feet is burned. Why do they do that? Because they're in darkness. They're in darkness. Husbands mistreat their wives so much. Every evening they take alcohol, wine, and they lost themselves. They come home and then they beat their wives, beat their children, they mistreat their families. They're in darkness. Sometimes it's very uh, weird to see some men rush into the church when service is going on and they shout on their wives, why did you come to church? And they grab the you know, hair of his wife or you know, his wife, grab hair, pull hair out, beating her, kicking her. But praise God for those faithful women. They come to church because they love God. And sometimes they use abusive words on me right on my face. They will you know, point out me and abuse me with all the you know, filthy words that they can speak. 
and they shout at me. Sometimes they come to grab my collar. You are the one that's spoiling our families. In what sense, I ask? They say you are bringing a foreign religion here and spoiling our families. I was quiet. I'll be quiet because Jesus Christ has gone through all those things. When he was spitten on his face, he was silent. When he was black and blue, beaten up, black and blue, he was silent. When they stripped off his clothes, he was silent. Christ said, the world hated me in the first place, therefore the world is going to hate you. Yes. The world is in darkness. One, because the world is in darkness, there is light, Jesus Christ, who came to this world, therefore he can, you know, take away the darkness from us and give us eternal life. That's what John is trying to say. Then, because the world is in darkness, it hates Christ. It hates the light. Chapter 1 verse 5 says, And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Though the light from heaven has come down to this darkened world, therefore this darkened world may be okay, enlightened, but the world failed to recognize the light, the world failed to comprehend the light, the world failed, the world failed to know the light. He was here for 33 and a half years, but the world failed to know him. His own people, that's what in verse 10 and 11 said, says, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came out to his own and his own received him not. The world did not know him and the world did not receive him because the world failed to comprehend the light. They got failed to see the light. They got failed to understand the light. They got failed to know the light. They got failed to comprehend the light. Because they failed to comprehend the light, they rejected the light. Verse, verse 11. So in verse 5, John says, the world failed to comprehend the light. And in verse Okay, 11 he says, because the world failed to comprehend the light, the world has gone to the next step, that's to reject the light. Verse 11, he came to his own and his own didn't receive him. In other words, rejected him. Yes, they have rejected the light because they failed to comprehend the light, understand the light. And the third step is, in chapter 3, verse 19 and 20, and this is the okay, condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light. That's the third step. They hate light because in the first place they fail to comprehend the light. Therefore they have gone to the second place thus to say no to the light reject the light and now the third step is they hate the light because they fail to comprehend and they reject it. Now the third level, the third step, they hate the light. People hate God. People hate his word. They are not happy with God's word. Yes, we see that throughout the world. You know, some of the families that I visit back at home, when I talk about politics, they are happy. When I talk about cricket, they're happy. When I talk about okay, COVID, they're happy. They're happy to listen to all those things. But when I come to the gospel and when I come to God's word, they're not happy. They say, hey, man, what are you talking? Let's talk about something else. This weird. Why weird? You say we are sinners. That's what the Bible tells. Oh, it's very weird for us. Yes, they hate the truth. They hate light. 
because they fail to comprehend the light and they, and they fail to receive the light. So they hate the light. In India, you have millions of gods and goddesses, millions, millions. Sometimes they, so sometimes they ask the people, can you please name 20 gods? At least 20 gods, they say one, two, three, then they're lost. The fourth one, they don't know. But there are millions of gods and goddesses in India. They're just working with every god and goddess, but, but when it comes to Christ, they hate. They say no. They're okay with this God, this God, this God, this God, all the 10 Gods, 20 Gods, 100 Gods, 1000 Gods, you know, million Gods, all the Gods, they're okay. They're okay to serve them. They're, they're just okay, okay with them. But when it comes to Christ, they have some problem. They hate Christ. One example, when I was in my, uh, okay, I should say intermediate, that is 12th standard here. One of our English teachers was talking about English grammar and said, talking about the article, okay, definite article, the, T-H-E, the, and, uh, and he was trying to uh, say some examples. He said, different article, the, should be used before every holy book, holy book in the Bible, uh, you know, in the world. Holy books such as Okay, Quran for the Muslims, Ramayana, Mahabharata, Upanishads, Vedas for the Hindus, and the Bible for the Christians. So my friend was sitting beside me and he was writing the Quran, the Mahabharat, then the Upanishads, and okay, Vedas, the Vedas, but he said, I'm not going to write the Bible. I, 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 I don't want to you know, read that word in my notebook. Yes, Christ said, the world hated me. Therefore, the world will hate you back. Why the world hates Christ? The problem is this. They fail to comprehend the light. They got failed to comprehend in the first place and in the second place because since they fail, automatically they reject. And automatically, they hate him. Well, I can't say yes because the world hates Christ. Let me not go out because they hate Christ. Therefore, let me sit in my couches. Let me relax. I can't say that. I can't say that. Why now? Was a six to eight. I'm going to complete in five to ten minutes if this is okay. Okay, thank you. Because I can't sit in my couches, I can't sit before my TV, I can't just sit and relax hours and hours because I got mission to do. What's that mission? John says, was a 6 to 8. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might be might believe, might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Look at the mission, the place of mission, the necessity of mission, the importance of missions. Yes, the light came to the world and lived for 33 and a half years. The world failed to comprehend and the world rejected and the world hated, that means that, okay, our job is done. Leave the world for itself, for its destruction. No. There was a man, John the Baptist. He was not the light, but he was here to witness the light. Where the world failed to comprehend, he stands there and to proclaim the light and to witness and to bear witness for the light. Therefore, at least... Some people will come to the light. Says, verse 7, The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men, not just one country, not just one community, not just one people, not just one language, all men, in all languages, may hear the gospel. 
and so sad, gospel in India is still confined to only certain places. There are many churches in the towns and cities because these so-called, you know, big churches, mega churches, they were just located in big towns and cities, but the gospel is not okay, taken to small villages, remote places. Still, there are many, many places which haven't heard the gospel. John says, it's for the whole world that all men may hear this truth about the light. Therefore, John stands as a witness bearer for the light. Was that only John? No. Christ said, go ye into all the world. Great commission, go ye into all the world and make disciples for me by preaching and teaching God's word. By preaching and teaching God's word. Today, we are the light bearers. We are here to bear witness for the light. Wherever we are. If you are working in some place, at your house, at the place you are working, in the town you are living, we are here to bear witness, whether people believe or not. Sometimes I, I got so discouraged because I go around, go around, day after day, you know, evening after evening, morning after morning, knocking the doors and preaching the gospel, but people say, no. I think it was book of Jeremiah or, uh, yes, Jeremiah, I think, or okay, Lamentations. I just forgot, I'm sorry, because I just got this thought right now here. The prophet said, you know, God said to the prophet, whether they hear or not, your job is to preach. Whether they accept or not, your job is to preach and proclaim. Preach and proclaim whether the people give their ear, whether they heed, whether they say yes, you don't need to bother about that. You are my prophet, therefore you just do your job. That's to preach. God said people will come, they see, they go, they don't listen to you at some point, but still then you preach. That's it. Therefore, whether people hate Christ or not, I don't bother. Whether they like Christ or not, I don't bother. Whether they say yes or not, I don't bother. My job is to go around and bear witness of the light who brought light into my life. He has taken away all the darkness. I, I am not a better person than one of the guys in India who beats his wife every evening. He is filled with wine. He lost himself. He comes and beats his wife and kicks her and the children. I am not better than him. But because the light came into my life, now today I am able to love my wife. Today I am able to take care of my children well. Today I am able to love the society around me. Because light came into my life. Therefore today I must be the person bearing witness for the light. Not to sit idle at my house. I should go around whether people accept or not. Yes, Christ said they don't accept. They don't accept. They hate. But still, you preach. Paul said, woe unto me if I do not preach the gospel. Woe unto me. You know, when I stand before Christ on the day of judgment, for the believers, I mean, be my judgment. I'm not talking about the white throne judgment. At the place of be my judgment, the judgment for every believer when we stand before Christ to give the account of the time God has given me resources. Of every resource and time and energy God has given me, I have to give an account to Him. That day, if I have done my job, even if there's no one to say, hey, Lord, this is a person that came to faith because I preach. Even there is nobody. Lord, I have done my job. Maybe no one accepted. 
I believe the Lord would say, well done, my faithful servant. The end doesn't justify the means. What I mean is, the people, how many people the Lord doesn't ask me? The Lord is not going to ask me, how many people you brought? But the Lord will say, till ask me, what did you do? As a witness bearer of the light, what did you do? Christ said, after his resurrection, before his ascension, he said, you are my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the world. You are my witnesses. Therefore, they went around preaching God's word, proclaiming God's word. They went around. I'm so much thankful for this church. You are bearing witness for the light in India. It, you, you might be surprised to hear this. How? Yes. You are bearing witness for the light in India because in India, I have privilege to conduct outdoor gospel services. Outdoor gospel services, yesterday I was walking in the roads and I saw there was a little place, okay, empty place just on the roadside beside the house of Brother, Brother Brian. So in India, if I have a, some empty place like that, I will set up, you know, a stage like this and sound equipment. And, and the light sponsored by this church, the sound equipment and the lights, then we sing songs and we preach the gospel and people will come and hear. The funds that this church is sending us, we are able to do such things for God. And people are coming to Christ in faith as they hear the gospel. God touches some hearts. God touches some hearts. I think ever since you started supporting the ministry back in India, many souls came to Christ because of the gospel meetings that we're doing in the streets, in the public places. Is there no opposition? There is opposition, but the Lord is helping us to even face the opposition and still preach the gospel. People will come and shout on our faces. Okay, we just send them in peace. Oh, sorry, sir. Just give us for one hour. We are going to complete it and go back home. We are, we are not here to disturb you. So this church is bearing witness for the light in India. And some souls have come to Christ in faith. They receive the light. They receive the light. I would appreciate this church. Thank God for this church. For all your labor. For all the pain that you are going through. I know it's very, very difficult in the okay, places where people have no regard for Christ. They have no regard for Christianity. They have no regard, so they look Christians down very, very difficult. I know that. But still then, our mission is to bear witness for the gospel, the light. Because we have received light, therefore let many others receive light. On behalf of my family, the ministry back at home, myself in person, I'm so happy to see you all, and I'm so privileged lot of thanks. Thank you so much for your love, contributions, financial support, prayers. You have great reward in heaven because when you go to heaven, there will be people in India who would say that the church prayed for us. The church supported the ministry. The church stood with us for the sake of bearing witness for the light. May God bless you. May God bless us. Thank you so much.